He weighed in at 118 pounds, wearing green trunks with gold trim. His record, perfect. 10 fights, 10 victories. Three of those victories coming by way of knockout. From Las Vegas, Nevada, but representing the Bronx, New York, Floyd Cash Flow Diaz. He weighed in at 117.8 pounds, wearing yellow trunks with white trim. His record, 12 victories with seven defeats and two draws. Five of those victories coming by way of knockout. From Juan Diaz, Puerto Rico, Edwin Rodriguez. Good evening, gentlemen. Edwin, anything here on down will be ruled low. Floyd, anything below my hand here will be ruled low. Gentlemen, you both know the rules. Obey my commands and protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves now. Come out fighting at the belt. This fight was originally supposed to happen last year, and Floyd Diaz took ill after the weigh-in. That time, he said Edwin Rodriguez at the weigh-in put his arm in front of me and tried to angle for, you know, position, and I let it slide. He's like, not yesterday at the weigh-in. I was in his grill because I'm a grown man now. So a grown man decision, Tim, to no longer have his father, Mike Diaz, in the corner. He's now working with Bo Mack and the entire team, Brian McIntyre, who also trains Terrence Bud Crawford amongst so many other fighters. What do you think of that move? Well, if you as a fighter, you got to make some tough choices, especially, you know, it's difficult with his father. His father's done a great job with him, got him this far in his career, you know, guided him. Um, but then there comes a time where you as a fighter and you as a, as a son feel that maybe there's something else better out there for me. So I understand the move. Um, hopefully, you know, it didn't tear down the family. Hopefully his father understands that, you know, it has nothing to do with him. He's done a great job with him uh, so far, but he's looking to go to that next level, and he shouldn't have a problem going with the best. He shouldn't have that problem going with the best, which is Bo Matt. As long as he puts effort into being on time and doing everything he needs to do to work like a professional because if there's something about Bomac, Esau, and Red Spikes is they expect professionalism every time you step into that gym. Well, that culture is going to be built over time. Um, right out the gate, you know, he, he's not used to that, but he's going to have to develop it extremely fast because um, they don't play over there. No. You know, and, they, and they're the type of camp that builds you up mentally first, get you that work ethic. They work seven days a week. And then when they spar, they spar four-minute rounds. Yep. And they work out constantly every single day. So it builds you mentally up. And you start to gain this discipline, which is good. And then they go into, well, why they're doing that, they're also, you know, making your technique a lot better than what it was before. So. See how patient. I've never seen Cashflow so patient. He's extremely patient right now. So they've kind of tamed that beast down in him. They want him to set set up his punches, be more accurate, more effective with his shots, than just letting his hands go, just, just throwing caution to the wind and hoping you get lucky to land a shot. Hey, Tim, how much you think it would cost to, to get that dude for you? Uh, Depending on where I get it done at. <laughs> I'm willing to. I'm sure the crew and I are willing to chip in and just to see what you would look like. Looking like Coolio. Yeah, I'm sure it would be looking like Coolio. <laughs> oh, nice Ooh, right big hand shot. That one, Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Oh, what an answer. Bro, hard inside that ring, man. I didn't know what round it was. I thought I was still in the second round when it was the tenth round. I see you do a somersault in there. I see all kinds of stuff. Oh, man, you hate <laughs> now. Oh, no. No, I'm just playing. No, you're right. I, I did do a somersault, hey, man. But what did you do after that? I uh, get up and come, I kept fighting. Kept, no, the, the, the fight with Kendall Hall when I got hit, like I got hit with a shotgun, mm -hmm. a bazook, bro. I hit that canvas. See, I was out of midair. And when I hit the canvas, I said, what am I doing on the ground? <laughs> I had no clue. I was like, what happened? And I was like, oh, I got knocked down. Yeah, man. 
It's real. Kendall Holt could crack. Yes, he can. That left hook. Well, apparently hey. Diaz sitting down on his punches can crack pretty good, too, yes, with that nice did. uppercut. Hey, Kendall Holt made me see Jesus. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you, bro. I woke up. I had, I, had a, I had a talk. I had a talk with God. I said, God, this ain't the way it's supposed to be. So Castro doing a good job right now. He's, he's picking his spots wisely. You know, this is a technical battle. Although you have Rodriguez that's coming forward. He's not putting, he's putting subtle pressure. He's not putting a whole lot of pressure. He's not getting reckless with his assault because he don't want to get clipped. But again, that uppercut, that uppercut is home. Anytime he wants it, it's there. Good body shot by Rodriguez. Look like Rodriguez has been hanging out with the Leopards. You see the back. <laughs> He's been doing all that cupping. Hanging out with the Leopards. All right. I ain't mad at you. Rodriguez still works installing kitchen cabinets with his assistant trainer. Um, he's a man out of Puerto Rico who fights for his family. That's the reason that he continues to come back into the ring. He's got three sons, Edwin, Eddie, and Jonael. Now he's got a daughter as well. And a young son is five kids. Nice left hook there Ooh, from Rodriguez. That was. And you know, Rodriguez, he 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 haunts you with your you know, with his pressure. He makes you he makes you feel like you need to throw. You really don't have to, but he makes you seem like you need to throw because he's right directly in front of you. Got the high guards up, blocking a lot of your shots, putting that mental pressure on you and also physical pressure on you. He makes you feel anxious. Body work from Rodriguez. Good free action from Diaz. See, Diaz needs to get heavy on his jab. That's what he needs to. He needs to get heavy on his jab. Keep some distance between himself. Floyd Diaz and his boxer girlfriend, Zarina, have known each other since they were both kids training at the same gym. But they have a great relationship now, Tim. They had a couple sparring sessions that did not today. He looked like a professor when we were doing that interview. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're right. You know, I don't know if I like the little, uh, I don't even know what you call those. They're not locks. Cornrows? Braids. No, no cornrows go backwards. Yeah, the little twist, yeah, top. It's I'm funny. Call your hairdresser. Now, see, the thing is, when you get hit, it, it, you look funny. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the judges can yes. see you flop. I agree. People Break don't think about that. Step back. Paul Malignaggi would be proud of this. Shout out to Paulie. Yeah, they old dog braids. <laughs> I, got my guy, I got my guys. I got my guys in the truck letting me know the, the info. I don't know. I never had hair, so I don't know all the hairstyles. <laughs> Turning into a fight, and Rodriguez wants this to be a firefight. Yeah, but it, it, it's interesting. It's happening right in the center of the ring. Yeah. <laughs> so both men have really good technical prowess, and right they're choosing. Each guy, each man is choosing to be aggressive and then want to lay on his back foot, and then vice versa. It's going back and forth. But right now, cash flow is just sitting still, you know, not using his legs. You know, they say they like that rhythm. They like rhythm. They, you know, that's that's what that's what Bo Magnum and that's what they teach, rhythm. I don't see a lot of rhythm coming from cash flow at the moment. I see him standing still directly in front, in harm's way to get hit. He's got eight rounds to get in the rhythm. Let's see if he's able to do that. That jab, see, the jab is important. See, and Rodriguez is just buying his time. He's looking for, to set up the perfect shot. He's looking for that right hand over the top. That's what he's looking for, right hand over the top of that jab. Look, Floyd knew that Rodriguez is tough. He fought Joshua Greer to a draw. Shot. And he's been matched tough to him over his last 11 fights. He's fought nine undefeated opponents, won four of those fights, five losses and two draws. So. He doesn't back down, and nah, he's going to find that out tonight. Nah, he don't back down, but he don't do enough to win either. Mm. You know, win these rounds, do enough. You know, you can get used to just getting in there and just, you know, throwing hands and, and not want to win. It's a huge difference. You know, come to win and win these rounds and stay consistent throughout the fight. A lot of times he has lows, and that's what costs him the fight. Yeah, I like this type of consistency right here That's from Southpaw Rodriguez. Stands. Yeah, I just like it. I mean, he's digging down to the body. Both guys are trading body shots, but he's staying consistent with his work. 
coming behind that jab now, closing the distance really well. Now you see the combinations rolling? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. That's how you win rounds. Hey! Out his neck, kind of saying he keeps his chin out. I mean, how charismatic is oh, Ali in a fighter meeting? Oh, he's a character. I, I, the fans will love him, honestly. He is a character. He was funny inside that fighter meeting. He was uh, extremely vocal on his game plan, and he knew exactly what he needed to do to beat Lopez tonight. You know, in the corner, if nothing else, you're going to get honesty from Bomax saying, hey, he got that round. And then asking him to pump that jab and set up the ones and twos for Floyd Diaz. That right hand, I knew it. That right hand over the top, that's what he's waiting on. I mean, when you sit mid-range, that's what's going to happen to you. You know, you're going to sit mid-range. You, you both guys can punch each other. Every time your hand leaves your face at mid-range, there's an opening. Either around the guard or around that arm or underneath. But that jab from... Good he jab. Has that That's a strong power before. jab. It's a yep. power jab. He stepped in behind it, pushing off that back leg, that rear leg, to generate momentum, forward momentum, put power behind his jab. That was a leaping jab, too, from the southpaw stance moments ago from Diaz. So when you're getting, when you're getting out jab, what do you think you need to do? Pick up your jab. It's not rocket science. It's not rocket science. You just pick up your jab, too. That's all you need to do, and then move your head. Knock his jab down, parry his jab, and shoot your own jab. Nice right uppercut from Diaz as Rodriguez started to commit. Quick 2-1 from Diaz. It's a good level change right there with his offense. Went down to the body. Started up top with the jab and the right hand to the body and came around with the left hook. Those are surprising shots from Diaz. But he needs to continue to do things like that. Good defensive responsibility from Diaz here in round four. Look, I, I noticed a lot of things in there. And, and if you look at the footwork of Rodriguez, anytime he steps back and he, and he, and he resets, he brings his feet together. That's a perfect opportunity for Diaz to step forward and catch him off balance and not ready to punch. Nice overhand right by Rodriguez. And Rodriguez carries that high guard. Again, you can penetrate that with short shots up the middle and coming around it, going around the elbows also to the body. Oh, another nice one. Right uppercut. Beautifully tied. Yeah. YouTube and punch That's in Ricardo boy. Finito Lopez, That's and you're going to see one of the best uppercuts ever. 105 pounds of pure dynamite. Yes. So don't say the little guys can't punch. Although Diaz only has 30% of his victories by knockout. Edwin Rodriguez, 5 out of 12 wins by stoppage. Like who's gonna take over this fight, man? You know, I'm, I'm looking for somebody to really start taking over and start taking over, you know, round by round. That last round was extremely close. The round before that was extremely close, I thought. You know, Bomac mentioned the fact, look, we've only worked with him for a few weeks, so it's not like we could change anything. It was about getting him in, cha in shape, making sure he got into rhythm. I don't, you mentioned it earlier, Tim. Round two, he wasn't in a rhythm yet. No. He's not in the flow yet. No, His he's name's not. Cash flow. Yeah, he's not in the flow. That ain't no cash flow on right now. <laughs> you know, he's been responsible def somewhat defensively. You know, his technical prowess is okay, but it, it's not it's not spectacular just yet. And you can tell that they kind of calmed him down. You know, he was pretty sporadic, throw combinations uh, from various angles. Switch southpaw, leaving himself exposed a lot of the times. 
you can tell that he's a little bit more underneath himself and, and a little bit more calculated. That's what I noticed different from cash flow. Any differences you notice from cash flow in terms of being trained by his father and now by Bolt Mac and team? Yeah, that, that's what I just said. He's just calm, he's calmed down. He's calmed down a bit. I think what his father, his father, the element that he brought was, was that his father understood that he was a fighter. And he used his natural instincts and in his, in his athleticism to win a lot of the fights. Like, there's nothing that Cash Flow hasn't seen. He's been in the gym with Floyd. He's been, you know, he's been around greatness. Absolutely. So, and he's, he can vary his attack. And right now, I'm seeing a guy that's that's pretty simple with his attack. Nothing, very, nothing just simple, just simplicity right now I'm seeing from him. You know, you're looking at this and I'm saying, hey, I don't see anything special. That's what I'm looking at. I don't see anything special. Trying to set something up, but Rodriguez is not a willing participant. No. All right. Ray Abe is making his U.S. debut tonight, ready to make a statement and show the world who he really is. He uses his words, but also nonverbal cues. State of the art equipment to be able to help your fighters get prepared and having old techniques as well, you know, to build their fighters. I know, do you know what I noticed about Japanese fighters? What's that? They're mentally tough. Oh, absolutely. Mentally tough, right? And they're disciplined. It's athletes. Culture. Yes, exactly. And when you put that combination together with talent, yeah. <laughs> you got a masterpiece. You get nine current world That's champions right. with an opportunity for 10. More than the seven that Mexico has currently. Wow. And Puerto Rico as well. So you look at that. Puerto, Puerto Rico, though, is on a dry spell, to be honest, in terms of world champions. But only three right now, including Sabriel Matias, who is one of the most exciting fighters, the top most exciting fighter, according to our very own Tim Bradley. That'll be the first of our two world title fights at Featherweight tonight. This round right here. A little bit of urgency from cash flow. Beautiful uppercut. He landed two uppercuts in a row. One with the left, one with the right. But I like the way he's putting his combinations together, kind of changing up the pace a bit. Not being predictable. You know, fighters, we catch on to we catch on to tendencies. Yep. We catch on to, to to fighters if they if they trying to rest. Like with experience, you understand that. You can feel it. It's a feeling type of thing. It's not something you see. It's just you feel it. Nice right hand, first to the chin, and then an uppercut from Floyd Diaz, letting his hands go a little bit more. See, now, now it seems like to me he's starting to get in his rhythm. He's starting to get in his flow. That's what I'm talking about right there. Now, you know, he's being himself, switching southpaw, you know, changing, changing the, you know, the angles of his punches, not being just straight up and down. See a mouse under the left eye of Edwin Rodriguez. But that uppercut's there for Diaz, Tim. The way Rodriguez is leaning in. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, the way Rodriguez is leaning in, and you saw him leaning in, he's like, go ahead and attempt that uppercut, but I got an overhand right for you. So the uppercut is, is a good punch. It's a good weapon, You got, but you got to throw it at the right distance in the right time because you can get clipped over the top with something you don't see. That, as you're throwing. That right hook that Floyd Diaz landed caused the cut, making that mouse explode under the... Left eye of Rodriguez. Oh, it looked no, like maybe it was blood no, from his nose, really. I think. Doesn't look that bad to me, champ. I saw blood and I thought it was cut. I said, cut me, Mick. <laughs> well, we're scheduled eight round fight. Floyd Diaz against Edwin Rodriguez. It all leads us to our two featherweight world titles culminating in Odebeck Komatov fighting Ray Ford for the vacant. WBA featherweight title. Before that, it's going to be Luis Alberto Lopez defending his belt against Ray Abe, the mandatory challenger. See, that's what I like. See the step around right there? Not stepping directly in front, not just stepping straight back. 
being on the line all the time like that. Now he's starting to flow. And he needs a couple of rounds to warm up. But that's what I'm talking about from cash flow. And you still see the same thing from Rodriguez. Rodriguez is trying to close the distance. Just and waiting for any low points, waiting for him to explode. He explodes when he, every time he's on the ropes, like Bo Max said. So nice combination there from Diaz, punctuated with a right uppercut. Look, if somebody gonna stand directly in front of you, yes, and just cover up like they're doing. <laughs> Why don't you just go? It's heavy bag work. Let your hands go. Let your hands go. Nice short, good right work from Rodriguez, and then the. Reaction from Diaz. Nice. Good Rodriguez. comeback right there from Rodriguez. See any law any laws of defense or or, or if, if if cash flow is not doing anything and just standing right there, <laughs> you expect Rodriguez to come on. Nice hook. Oh. Rodriguez lands there. Pick up your feet, cash flow, and move a different direction. I mean, this is coming off of a great round six, probably his best round of the fight. Oh, what a that shot that hurt. Cash flow caught him coming in. Break, let go. Let go of his head. Ed Floyd, thank you. Cash flow with a little smile there, saying, I, I got you with that one. But there's got to be more to that, Tim. There's always a need for more. <laughs> Always a need for more. Absolutely. You're right. Ooh. Nice uppercut once again from Cashflow Diaz. This time with the that, left. Man, shoot. That Rodriguez shot. Catching him as he's trying to throw a shot or uppercut. Nice combo there from Diaz. You see one thing, I see another. Yeah. But that's the beauty they're about both that's there. The beauty. Yes, yes. Both men are training some big shots. Rodriguez is relentless. Relentless. Oh, what a shot. Perfectly timed. Just sitting on that back foot, you see. And then he gets hit with a clipping shot right there for Rodriguez. There it My is again. This is an exchange in the center of the ring. Rodriguez is starting to up. Team Lopez just told me that for tonight's first world title fight, trainer Armando Valenzuela is not going to be in the corner. He got sick, is not going to be in the corner tonight. Kei Karoma was not part of the team for this fight, so it's going to be Rene Odorica, Hector Fernandez, and Stitch Duran working that corner tonight. Yeah, a, lot, a lot of people wondering how, how that's going to affect him. I don't think it will. A fight is a fight. One, and he's worked with Kei before. But he's not here. Kei's not, Karoma's not here? No. So, however... He got a belt to, re to, to to retain. You know, you can't be thinking about that outside stuff. You, you got to focus, and I think he's he knows that. You know, and he's been around the game an extremely long time, so I don't think it should bother him whatsoever. All right, we'll see. That's our first of two world title fights tonight. We'll see how Luis Alberto Lopez reacts to that situation of not having his lead trainer in the corner. He fights on instincts anyways. He's he know what he got to do. He knows what he, he, know he got to do. do. The game plan is set. But At the end of the day, he knows how to fight. Man. That's true. At the end of the day, he knows how to fight. And he's a veteran of the sport. Nah, I think it's a rookie who, you know, a, a yeah, that's ten, my point. Ten fight fighter getting a world title fight. All of a sudden, this guy's been there, done that. Been there, done that. And he still got to take care of business. But I'll tell you, the team is not happy about. The trainer being sick and not being in the corner. They just got to pull through. Well, that's nice why you have a team. That's why you have a team. The ones that's closest to you, and they've seen the game plan, and they know exactly what you're capable of doing and what you should be doing. Double left hug from Floyd Diaz. Ooh, Rodriguez really put himself out there missing that shot. Yeah. Just a bad, a bad time, timing shot right there from Rodriguez. He thought he cash flow was gonna come in. He didn't. He didn't come inside. Nice flurry downstairs from Diaz. Trying to put the finishing touches on this fight. A quick left hook from Cashflow Diaz, and he's letting 
his hands go and going to town on Edwin Rodriguez. See, and that's 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 that's, that's, the, that's the original cash flow. That's, yep. that's 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 cash flow right there. We seeing cash flow right now. You know, but the the, the objective is is to limit the amount of punches he's taking being himself. That's the objective. And that's a tough objective because Cashflow is a fighter through and through. Good shot. Eight rounds in the books. 